How hard is it to be black owned in this shit though? Like, man, it's 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 difficult. Uh, any I think in any in any industry when you black, um, especially when you going into industries where we're not known, you know, like if you start a record label, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? We done seen bird, man. We see people who did it, but when you get into the sports world and that good old boy network, it's a little difficult. Um, mm -hmm. and that's why I had to to launch Checkmate Sports because I was interning for other agents trying to get in, but they were always little brother me. You know what I'm saying? They would just make me do a little, you know, BS word, Microsoft Excel, stuff like that. So I said, you know what? I'm just gonna stack my bread up and then you know, we took off with Checkmate. For sure. What's your staff? Your staff, your whole staff black or you got? Yeah, I used to have a Hispanic guy, um, but he ended up uh, started his little agency and stuff like that. We put him on, but right now we're just all black on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what's your, how you, like, how, what is your approach to keep athletes, like, on the proper path to get to that level of that draft? Because keeping it real, we don't have athletes here that, that, Keep it real, like uh -huh. I smoke, I drink lean, I do this, I do that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But you obviously know now. This is your investment. You don't put money into them. It's a little different than a rapper. Like oh, you got to keep man. them healthy. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Like it's what's the some of the shit you do to keep them niggas straight and narrow? And another thing that could fuck these athletes up too is the women. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? Most like definitely. someone can have vices with women, be going too crazy. They don't practice. They ain't focused. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And that can fuck it up. So how you keep them? How you keep them focused? On the outside looking in, when you are a fan or when you just watch the game as a novice, you you know you wonder why certain players stay in the league longer than others. Mm -hmm. And then when you start to get in an agent or in the industry where you're investing in these players, you start to respect guys like Larry Fitzgerald and Jerry Rice and mm -hmm. guys who got the talent and stay out of trouble. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, most of these guys, man, they. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, they got the egos, a lot of them are divas and stuff like that. But that's why they need <laughs> what they, they divas, divas, man. What and they that, be doing, bro? Man, I had a guy. I got him to the league, and I ain't gonna say his name, but it was crazy because I got him to the league after all the pandemic stuff. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. He well, called. It gotta me. be one of the two people you just I'm, named. Right. But we'll so, fall but back. Yeah, yeah. But you know, <laughs> it hey, ain't hey, hey, it is one of them two. So he, I ain't gonna say. <laughs> right. But he get him to the league. Right. He called me 4 a.m. I'm thinking he got arrested. Something crazy to happen. I pick up the phone. Like, what's going on? I feel like Jerry Maguire. So I'm like, here it goes. Mm -hmm. He's like, man, I want to come home. I said, for what? What happened? He was just like, man, I, I um, I walked in the in the in the uh in the team room and I seen the depth chart and I was like, okay, what happened? Man, they had me last on the on the depth chart. <laughs> I said, okay, then what happened? Right. Nothing. That's it. I'm I'm last. I'm like. I Meaning you not you probably not gonna play. Bro, dude, you, you was unranked, undrafted. You you, just you be rest. happy you there. You, you know get, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You getting <laughs> your money. Yeah. You there. Yeah, you getting your money. Yeah. And so yeah. we had, it was like 5 a.m. had to call his mom, his dad. We sitting on the phone. We just having a whole little, uh, we trying to keep him from uh, jumping off the cliff. So that right there was my first little thing. Like, man, these guys that, that uh, mentally, their egos and stuff like that, like they need a team around them because it's a lot of pressure on them. You know, Have that's you been what, hit in the head yet? They all get hit in the head, you know. That's just a part of the football. What the fuck kind of question was that? I think she's talking about the CTE or something yeah, like that. Yeah, like, do yeah, you yeah. think that was, nah, like, I don't think that's had it. anything to do with it? Nah, not. I mean, he was a rookie, so he ain't been in the league that long. But it's just the, the you know, the nerves and stuff like that. That's all. Yeah, yeah he been hit in the head. Right. <laughs> it's the football. Fuck, Everybody getting hit in the motherfucking head. Right. Hey, so what kind of D, what else kind of D was shit you be seeing in this shit? Man, you believe it or not, man. Um, a lot of times the athletes get a bad a bad rap, but it's the people around them. You know, when you get into the industry, you start realizing that it be the handlers, the middleman, the the mom, the dad, the the cousins who more Hollywood than the actual athlete. Mm. You know, so that's the stuff that you have to deal with as an agent. You know, if you're trying to talk to a player, they may be locked in on football, they locked in on basketball, whatever. But mm. then you have to go. Uh, he'll say, "Okay, talk to my uncle, talk to my dad, talk to my," you know. So now you gotta go talk to the dad who's talking to three other agents. Mm -hmm. You know, who may promise them a job, promise them you know X mm -hmm. amount. So it's a lot of stuff similar to the music industry. It's the it's the same thing. It's just instead of they rapping, they throwing the football, catching it. It's funny. It was one of these guys I was recruiting. And I actually drove up to his house, you know, I went in, and I went into the house, uh, buddy put me on to him. I walk in the house, they had $20,000 in ones on the table. So I'm looking around, I'm thinking like, okay, this is set up. I'm like, what the, what's going on? Come to find out, uh, his dad owned a, can't say what it is, because people link it, but he owns a business where he need a lot of ones, you get it? So they up there cash, you know, counting money on the mm -hmm. table, stuff like that, so I'm like, okay. Good, good. I, 
I ain't gonna say, but I'm just I look. I'm like, okay, you know, that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I see what already where this conversation going ahead. Mm. So I do my little pitch, you know, and then at the end they looking at me and they like, okay, so uh, you know, I, I feel it. I'm like, what, what's up? What y'all got to say? Let's let's say it. Mm. And they was like, um, you know, what you gonna you gonna put some money up or something? I'm like. So now I sit back in the chair, I'm like, oh man, this is gonna be one of these conversations. What you ain't talking? So you then gotta I'm give like, a nigga some money. Though. I mean, that's cool, but I just it has to. Let me say that's cool. It's <laughs> that's <laughs> I understand that that's part of the game, but a lot of times people, you know, be throwing out astronomical numbers. So what? So hold on, let me let me see this. So what the agent job to do? When I come to you, how am I selling myself to you? Like if you come, if I was if I was a prospect right now, what would you come tell me and my family? If you was a prospect, first of all, we want to make sure that you're going to be the the focal point of our, you know, agency. A lot of times, players go to the agencies that have a hundred clients. But what I'm saying, I'm already that. I'm already that. I'm already him. I'm already that nigga. What you gonna tell me to make me feel right? Basically, what I'm gonna do is just show them that we're gonna work for them, fight for them, and have their best interest at heart. You know, we took two guys that were under the radar and that was unranked. You know, Travis and Christian from HBCUs. So imagine what we could do for a player like you from Georgia. Alabama, USC, things like that. So we're gonna make sure that we you're get not you into what the I'm league. Saying, though. I get what you're saying. Uh huh. I'm saying is, I'm already that nigga coming out of high school. Like I know I, I'm finna be the shit. He's Zion. But you trying to sign uh, he's me? Zion Williams. What are you telling me? You telling me some shit that I'm already that's already gonna happen. And he probably hearing it. Let's just keep it real. He probably hearing it, even though you're the black agent. And he at his, at his heart, he want to fuck with you, but he hearing it from the white agents. He's hearing yeah, the same like what thing. you gonna say special? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At the end of the day, it ain't nothing special to say. It's just building that relationship. Everybody gonna say the same thing, but who you rock with? You know who gonna be there? Yeah, that's that's what it is. At the end of the day, we all got the same money. We all gonna pay for the same training. We all pass the same exams. We all can do negotiate the same contracts. It's just who do you like? Who do you relate? With? I guess it's like. But I'm over here. This like white boy over here telling me he finna give me goddamn two, three hundred thousand, and he already got goddamn. They can't do that though. Yeah. They what you mean they can't do that? Yeah. What it is? Yeah, they can't do that. So what you mean? Oh, so when they ask you for money, that's illegal. That's why I be like. You know, we got to sit back and stuff like that. But, I mean, it's illegal, but then there's ways that people maneuver around it. I've been you know, seeing nigga paying these young niggas forever, though, coming out of high school. Oh, no, no, go no, ahead, no. Jay, ask your question, Jay. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, no, Jay, ask your I question. I don't know about that. <laughs> I have a question. Bro, what you finna say, bro? I already asked it. He what? answered it, I guess. I don't know. It's like it's like choosing. Record, it's I'm like, not doing that. It's like, <laughs> nah, you better not. It's like, choo it's like choosing a lawyer, like. It's the lawyer that you trust, or the manager that you yeah. trust, or whatever. Oh, so it's just is. a nigga just to go represent you like a manager. That's what a sports mm -hmm. agent That's is. Except are. they we put a little bit into you because they got to get you trained and shit. You see? So what, I'm what about the niggas like when you know how you see a nigga in the hood like be fuck with all these athletes coming up and got them make sure they go to school. They the middle man. Mm -hmm. Oh, they the nigga that they bring the, it to the agent. They, the mm -hmm. they get paid too. They like the A and R, so they go find the town, then they go take it to the agent, or they get, go take it to whoever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So they get paid too. You know what I'm saying? On yeah. on the back end. Oh, they split. It's percentage. like a finder's fee or some shit, yeah, right? Yeah. On on the back end, if that but, player blows. But up. I heard niggas say like they split the percentage with the agent. Like I think it's like four percent they give you, a or lot, five percent. A lot of that stuff is is really they're not supposed to be doing that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I mean, how the hell am I supposed to get man if I've been taking taking care of this young nigga? Cause you can't do I'm it as an agent. I'm not saying me. That, I'm, I'm running around with this nigga in the gray area. I'm He's telling saying you, that. yeah, a lot of that stuff that they're doing is is is. Under the table, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's it ain't supposed to be like that. So this is the fucked up thing that they've been saying about college athletes, right? That's why they just passed the is an NIL. NIL. They didn't get shit. money, nothing, right? Yeah. yeah. Now they can but get now some the money. Game gonna change. But before they just wanted them niggas to starve. Right. And that's where everybody been kind of protesting the NCAA and all that shit because it's like you can't do nothing, you can't do that, you can't get no money here. You can't. All you can do is play football and go to go to class. Exactly. Which don't make sense because a lot of these niggas coming from nothing. And they family at home fucked up, and you telling me I can't get no money. So, so why? You know a nigga gonna do some illegal shit. Exactly. Yeah. I got to. Got to take exactly. some type of risk. I got exactly. to. Like shit, um, damn nigga, I'm a nigga. This shit ain't guaranteed. Exactly. One thing about that ball, this shit ain't guaranteed. Yeah. Nah. One thing can go wrong. You take one hit. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. the crazy part is the universities, the coaches, everybody else making millions of dollars, but the players, the athletes, they not. They always get the short end. So of the what's ride. The, what's like marketing for uh for like a. Sports agent. So be the best way I can explain it is I feel like athletes are now the new influencers. So you know how you got Jake Paul and these guys making millions of dollars, but now they're trying to get into boxing. Mm -hmm. But now you got guys like, uh, you know, just think of 
uh, Reggie Bush when he was coming right, out, right. Zion, when these guys were mega stars, yeah. but they wasn't able to capitalize off of it. But now if you got four or five million followers, you can hook up with a su uh, supplement company. You can hook up with uh, up and coming Nike or something like that and promote it to your brand, you know, to your social media. And now you get paid. And that's going to change the landscape for ages because now if you are a big firm and you just say, hey, so-and-so, I'm going to throw you $100,000. If you a freshman been making, you know, two, three million a year, that 100000 don't mean nothing. Yeah, you know, man. so now it's not, it's no longer about who got the bigger bag. It's really about the right thing. Who do you relate to? Who do you trust? And who do you feel, you know, got your best interests?